G'day, I'm Dr. Philip Button from the Food Entrepreneurship Academy. We had a request about E575, food additives 575, glucono, delta, lactone. And, you know, a request for, uh, you know, just some information about it and if it's uh, safe for a particular group, uh, uh, for a particular population. So I thought it might be a good, uh, good opportunity to put a video together and uh, summarize, bring the information together uh, in uh, in this video. So I'm just going to share my screen and uh, and then I'll take you through it. Uh, so yeah, glucono delta lactone. Uh, you know, what is it? Is it safe? And um, a few bits and pieces like that. So it's uh, as you can see there, it's you know a rather nondescript uh, white powder. So you know, it really doesn't look uh, uh, you know anything too different from almost anything else. Uh, but you know what actually is it? So this particular. Uh, these chemical diagrams here show exactly uh, what it is and also how it actually works. So we'll get get into that a bit uh, uh, a bit more later. But you can see on the left of the left chemical uh, diagram there is the actual uh, the actual glucono delta lactone itself. So when it's in water or when there's water added to it, then it becomes gluconic acid. And that forms the basis of its, uh, you know, one of the key prime uses, which is as a acidity regulator. So to reduce the, uh, reduce the pH. Uh, but it's basically a derivative of glucose. And it's important to know that it's unrelated to lactose because when people see the word lactose, they think, uh, you know, all I wonder, is it from uh, milk? Is it an animal source? Is it from lactose? Uh, something like that. Uh, but yeah, this, this basically shows uh, uh, what it is. And when it is mixed with water, so in a food, uh, food context, you know, what it actually, uh, what it actually becomes. And yes, it is natural and it does occur in a range of food products. So we've got uh, grapes and honey, uh, you know, fruit juices, wine. It's uh, naturally present in all of those. Uh, but in the industrial context, it's produced from the uh, fungus Aspergillus niger. Uh, so fermentation from that fungus, which we've got the picture down in the bottom right corner, and that's how it is industrially produced for a range of food and non-food uh, applications. What does it do? Well, I've already mentioned about its acidity regulation where it uh, reduces the pH by uh, its, uh, its um, reaction with water, which forms gluconic acid. And the thing to note there is that it's quite different from, you know, so-called normal acidity regulators and that it's more of a slower controlled uh, release of the, um, uh, of that reaction. So it's a, a slower uh, reduction of pH. Uh, as well as that, it's, um, you know, also got applications in curing, uh, Pickling, so that's you know, especially the curing. That's more in the meat context. Leavening with uh, uh, bakery products, of course, and it also can chelate or sequester uh, particular metals. So that means that if there's trace metals, uh, you know, in in a food product, for example, if if glucono delta lactone is present, then it can actually latch onto those, uh, draw those out of the of the uh, uh, general environment of the food and prevent them from uh, taking part in any chemical reactions. Uh, so basically, you know, it draws it out and makes, you know, removes them from, from the food uh, so that it's not actually able to do, do anything you know, in the food. And uh, lastly, you know, how actually safe is it? Well, it 
you know, by and large, it, you know, it looks to be one of the safest uh, additives actually out there because, uh, you know, by looking through the scientific and medical literature, there are actually no safety issues, you know, either existed, reported, or even speculated on. And while, you know, there are um, tests on uh, animal models, so, you know, hamsters and rats and those sorts of things, uh, you know, and, and of course, there's none on uh, humans. Uh, but despite that, you know, it's been approved by major food regulatory bodies around the world. So we're talking about uh, you know, Europe and North America and uh, the Oceania region. And, that, and that's just food, whereas it's also, you know, used in uh, you know, a range of non-food applications. So you know, even uh, cosmetic type uh, baby products. So food, non-food, uh, you know, the world over, it's, um, you know, it seems to be one of, the, one of the safest because even in the scientific and medical literature and even searching, uh, you know, doing a general, uh, general online internet search, it's, um, there's just nothing, nothing comes up. So, uh, you know, basically, uh, go for it, I reckon, uh, you know, whether you're, you know, whether you're, uh, old or young, no matter what uh, kind of, uh, you know, uh, concerns you have, but, um, you know, then it uh, won't be of a concern. So it's a, um, it's a safe additive, uh, E575. So, yeah, thank, thanks very much for listening. Uh, this, uh, thanks very much for listening this time. And it's, uh, yeah, it's always been an absolute pleasure to, share this information, find out some things, share some information with you. And uh, yeah, really look forward to your company on another video that we uh, will put together uh, sometime soon. So please uh, please check out some of our other videos uh, to see what sort of you know, topics we cover. And if you like what we do, then would really appreciate uh, your subscribe to our, uh, our channel. So uh, once again, thanks for, uh, thanks for viewing and it's been a, um, it's been great talking to you and thanks very much and we shall see you again. Bye for now.